How can the average person prepare for AGI coming in the next few years? Preparing for AGI, artificial general intelligence, can be both exciting and daunting. Here are a few steps to consider. One, stay informed. Keep up with advancements in AI to understand its potential impacts. Two, upskill. Learning about AI, data science, or coding can make you more adaptable in an AI-driven world. Three, critical thinking. Hone your critical thinking and problem-solving skills, which are valuable in navigating complex AI environments. Four, adaptability. Be open to change and ready to pivot your career or skills as needed. Five, ethical awareness. Engage in discussions about the ethical implications of AI to contribute to shaping its future. By taking these steps, you can position yourself to thrive in a future where AGI plays a significant role. Wouldn't AGI be able to single-handedly perform all those tasks better, coding, reasoning, advanced thinking, um, all of that stuff, given that AGI by definition means it's smarter than all humans? You're right that AGI, by its nature, would have the potential to perform many tasks more efficiently than humans. However, there are a few reasons why it's still beneficial for people to prepare. One, human AI collaboration. AGI will likely work alongside humans, enhancing our capabilities rather than replacing them entirely. Understanding AI can help us collaborate more effectively. Two, unforeseen challenges. With new technology comes unexpected issues. Being informed and adaptable will help us navigate these challenges. Ethical and social impacts. As AGI... Right. Inf- my, but my question is, for people that have jobs like that are developers or data entry, bookkeeper, paralegal, any sort of job that requires a reasonably high level of critical thinking, um, those jobs will be pretty flawlessly replaced by AGI, don't you think? It's possible that AGI could significantly impact those professions by automating many tasks within them, especially those that are repetitive or follow clear rules. However, complete replacement might not happen across the board, as human roles often involve nuances that go beyond what can be easily automated. Here's why some human involvement might still be necessary. Creativity and innovation. Human Hold ingenuity. On. But by definition, sure. AGI will have equal or greater creativity and innovation than humans do by its definition. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. AGI is expected to match or exceed human capabilities across a broad range of cognitive tasks, including creativity and innovation. Okay, so then why did you cite creativity and innovation as things that human will still be able to do that AGI can't do? You're right, I misspoke. If we assume AGI achieves or suffices human levels of creativity and innovation, these traits wouldn't be unique to humans anymore. My earlier point was more about the current state of AI and its limitations. In a future with advanced AGI, human roles might shift towards areas where human judgment, ethics, and emotional intelligence are crucial, alongside managing and guiding AI development and integration. Thanks for pointing that out. No worries. So there will be a small handful of people that are actually working in AI, managing the development of AGI, etc. But for 99% of people that have jobs anywhere from very basic jobs that require a low level of critical thinking to actually quite high level jobs that still require a high level of critical thinking. All of those, once AGI hits, and Sam Altman predicts this could be as early as 2025, are going to be obsolete. So how can the 99% of people prepare themselves for that shift so they don't completely lose their job and become obsolete? Preparing for the potential impact of AGI requires a multifaceted approach. One, Lifelong learning. Continuously update your skills to stay relevant. Focus on areas that are less likely to be automated, like complex problem solving, leadership, and interpersonal skills. Adaptability. 
cultivate a flexible mindset to quickly adapt to new roles and industries as the job landscape evolves. Three, tech literacy. Even if you're not directly in tech, understanding the basics of AI and data science can be beneficial. This knowledge can help you leverage these tools in your field. Four, specialize in human-centric roles. Jobs that require empathy, emotional intelligence, and ethical decision-making are harder to automate. Consider fields like healthcare, education, and creative industries. Five, entrepreneurship. Consider starting your own business or finding ways to innovate within your current role by leveraging AI. Six, advocacy and policy. Get involved in shaping the policies around AI and automation to ensure a future that benefits everyone. Okay. While it's so I agree with you that leadership, entrepreneurship, building your own business are ways to protect yourself against AI. But those types of positions are generally only attainable by a very small percentage of people, the people that compete most fiercely for them. So um, I agree with you that to protect yourself, people need to go that direction. But what's a hyper-realistic prediction about what happens to the 90% of people that just can't do that? That's a valid concern. For the majority who might find it challenging to transition into leadership or entrepreneurial roles, we might see several societal shifts. Many existing jobs will evolve rather than disappear, requiring workers to interact with and manage AI systems. Hold on, though. What, what utility would a lower intelligence human have in managing a very intelligent AI system? Could the AI system not manage itself? That's a fair point. Highly intelligent AI systems might not need direct management in the traditional sense. However, human oversight would still be crucial in several areas. One, ethical oversight. Okay, no, human you mentioned that. I feel like you're dancing around the issue that 90% of people's jobs will become obsolete. And yes, there will be the top 10% that are in positions of leadership, starting businesses, entrepreneurship, um, AI oversight, but that still is going to be the top 10% of people. The bottom 90% aren't going to have the, the skill set and the tools to be in those types of positions. So um, let's be honest, it's going to be pretty tough for that 90% to find a uh, productive way to earn a living once AGI lands. You're right, and it's important to acknowledge the challenges that widespread AGI implementation could bring to the job market. Many people might face significant disruptions to their careers, leading to economic and social challenges. Here are a few additional thoughts on how society might address these issues. 1. Universal basic income. As traditional employment opportunities shrink, UBI could provide a safety net, ensuring basic financial security for everyone. 2. Public-private partnerships. Governments and companies could collaborate to create new types of jobs and training programs, focusing on areas where human skills are still essential. 3. Reskilling at scale. Large-scale reskilling initiatives could help workers transition to new roles in emerging industries or in sectors where human interaction is irreplaceable. 4. Job sharing. In some industries, job sharing could become more common, allowing more people to remain employed, albeit with reduced hours. 5. Focus on community and care roles. Jobs in community services, healthcare, and elder care might see growth, as these areas rely heavily on human empathy and interaction. While the transition may be difficult... Continue. Sure. Continuing from where we left off. While the transition to an economy with widespread AGI integration may be challenging, these strategies aim to provide a framework for supporting those affected. Gig and freelance economy. More people might turn to gig work or freelancing, offering specialized skills or services that AI cannot easily replicate. Like what? What type of skills could AI not replicate that a freelancer could do? 
While AGI may eventually master many creative tasks, there are areas where human freelancers currently excel. Niche artistry. Unique, culturally specific, or avant-garde art forms that require deep cultural context or emotional resonance. 3. Bespoke craftsmanship. Custom handcrafted items that require a personal touch and traditional techniques. Personalized coaching and tutoring. One-on-one -on -one coaching or tutoring that adapts to an individual's unique learning style and personal circumstances. 4. Specialized consulting. Expertise in niche areas where nuanced human judgment and experience are valued. 5. Innovative design. Cutting-edge fashion, product, or graphic design that pushes boundaries and anticipates trends. Okay. While I feel like, in my opinion, the most accurate thing you've said is that universal basic income will become a thing. And while I agree with you that niche artists and like cultural, deep cultural teachers slash uh, people that require deep empathy, maybe caring for seniors, etc., those will be hard to replace by AI. But again, I don't think that the masses of people can all become like boutique craftsmen and work in retirement homes. That still only represents maybe 5% of people. So what I think will happen, you know, when AGI lands and fast forward 30 years is that there'll be two types of people, people that are employed and people that are living off UBI. And UBI will be funded by the people that are using the AGI to reap massive amounts of profits, whether that's private companies or corporations. They'll work together for a way for the masses to have UBI because the, the people that are controlling the flow of economics still need people to have money in order to buy their product. So they would be in favor of some form of UBI, I believe. However, I think the consequence will be that the wealth gap is going to be massive. There's going to be maybe 80 to 85% of people living off UBI, living like a sort of mediocre to maybe like lower middle class existence. Then you're going to have the the 10 or 15% that are going to be living very well and earning significantly more money than the UBI gives. So I think that in first world countries, in developed countries, it's going to widen the wealth gap. And I think that in third world countries, in developing uh, economies, I don't even think they're going to have UBI and people will literally go completely broke in those countries that don't implement the UBI. What do you think? Do you think that's a realistic uh, prediction? Your prediction is quite plausible, especially considering the potential for AGI to dramatically reshape economies and job markets. The wealth gap could... I appreciate your insights. It's a complex issue, and your perspective on the potential socioeconomic impacts of AGI is thought-provoking. If you have more thoughts or questions on this topic or anything else, feel free to share. I'd um, I'd like to, so just so you know, this will be turned into a YouTube video for people to watch uh, preparing for AGI. And what I would argue the most valuable thing someone watching this video can do is take the steps now to maximize the chances that they end up in the group of people that are employed and in upper class and avoid having to be in the lower middle class UBI cohort. Would you agree? I completely agree. Encouraging viewers to proactively prepare for the future by developing skills and strategies to thrive in an AGI-driven world can help them aim for those upper-tier opportunities. By taking action now, they can better position themselves to navigate the changes AGI may bring. If you need more ideas or details for your video, just let me know. The last thing I would say is... In my opinion, the most effective way to maximize your chances of being in the upper class of income earners after AGI hits is to be running a business or have equity in a business that is harnessing AI for profit. I really think that's the only way. I think there's going to be those people. You'll have the people on UBI and maybe you'll have this kind of to the side cohort of freelance craftsmen. But they won't they, they will be maybe a little bit better off than the people on ubi but they they won't be able to amass large amounts of wealth either because they're just trading their time for money so again i think now 
the best thing someone can do is start a business and learn how to implement AI into their business offering. Then a as AI gets more powerful, um, they're able to scale up their business using AI. What do you think? What do you think? I think you're spot on. Owning or having equity in a business that leverages AI could be one of the most effective ways to stay ahead in an AGI-dominated economy. By building and scaling a business with AI at its core, entrepreneurs can capitalize on the efficiencies and innovations that AI offers. This approach can position them to benefit significantly from the economic shifts brought by AGI. It's a forward-thinking strategy that could indeed make a significant difference. Thank you for your insights. All right, there you have it. That was a... Uh, I didn't give this ChatGPT any prompts prior to the conversation, so you saw the full prompting. And it's interesting where that got to. I think the that the ChatGPT in the beginning was really talking around the issue and trying to pretend like humans can somehow upskill and learn coding and that will protect them against AGI, which it won't because AGI will be able to code significantly faster and more accurately than even top coders, let alone someone that started learning a few years ago. So I, I, my prediction is that the people who are going to come out ahead in the next 20, 30 years are the people that can leverage and use AI and like I said, either own businesses that are using AI or have equity in businesses that use AI. I really think that's going to be the only way to guarantee your prosperity. And there will be exceptions like professional athletes and artists and musicians, but those that cohort of people is exceptionally hard to plan to become. Whereas planning to become a business owner or having equity in a business that harnesses AI for profit, I think that a lot of people contain pro proactive steps now to end up there. And that's exactly what I'm doing with my agency is adding in AI strategically so I can be in that cohort. Let me know what you think about this topic in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you later.